Talk Everlasting by Natalie Babbitt. Chapter 16. The constable was fat and he was sleepy. He wheezed when he spoke, and he spoke quite a bit as they started off, he and the man in the yellow suit. First, they roused me out of bed in the middle of the night, after I'd been out since sunup looking for that child, and now I suppose you're going to try to run me all the way, he said sourly. I got to tell you, this horse of mine is none too strong. I don't have to hurry her as a rule, so most of the time it don't matter. Seems to me we could have waited till dawn anyway. The man in the yellow suit was as courteous as always. The Fosters have been waiting since yesterday morning, he pointed out. Naturally, they're very upset. The sooner we get there, the sooner that child will be with them again. How come you're so deep in it? asked the constable suspiciously. Maybe you're in cahoots with the kidnappers. How do I know? You should have reported it right off when you saw her get snatched. The man in the yellow suit sighed. But of course I had to find out where they were taking her, he explained patiently. I came right back after that, and the Fosters are friends of mine. They've, uh, sold me their wood. The constable's eyes went round. I'll be, he said. What do you know about that? I didn't suppose they'd ever do a thing like that, friend or no friend. They're the first family round here, you know. Proud as peacocks, all of them. Family proud and land proud, too. But they sold off, did they? Well, well. And he whistled in amazement. They thumped along in silence for a while out around the wood and across the starlit meadow. Then the constable yawned deeply and said, You ready to tell me how long this is going to take? How far we got to go? Twenty miles north, said the man in the yellow suit. The constable groaned. Twenty miles! He shifted the shotgun that rested across the saddle and groaned again. Clear up in the foothills? That's a fair way, all right. There was no reply to this. The constable ran his fingers down the gleaming barrel of the shotgun. Then he shrugged and slumped a little in the saddle. Might as well relax, he wheezed, suddenly companionable. We'll be riding three, four hours. Still, there was no reply. Yes, sir, said the constable, trying again. It's something new for these parts. Kidnapping. Never had a case like this before that I know of, and I've been in charge going on 15 years. He waited. You don't say so, his companion said at last. Yep, that's a fact, said the constable with evident relief. Maybe now there would be some conversation. Yep, 15 years. Seen a lot of trouble in 15 years, but nothing quite like this. Of course, there's a first time for everything, as they say. We got a brand new jailhouse, did you notice? Listen, it's a dandy. Give those folks nice clean accommodations, he chuckled. Of course, they won't be there long. Circuit judge will be coming through next week. He'll send them over to Charlieville, most likely to the county jail. That's what they do for your serious crimes. Of course, we got a gallows of our own if we ever need it. Keeps down trouble, I think, just having it there. Ain't ever used it yet. That's because they take care of the serious stuff over to Charlieville, like I say. The constable paused to light a cigar and went on cheerfully. What you got planned for that piece of foster land? Going to clear her? Put up a house or a store, maybe? No, said the man in the yellow suit. The constable waited for more, but there was no more. His sour mood returned. He frowned and shook the ashes from his cigar. Say, he said, you're kind of a closed lip feller, ain't you? The man in the yellow suit narrowed his eyes. His mouth, above the thin gray beard, twitched with annoyance. Look here, he said tightly. Would you mind if I rode on ahead? 
I'm worried about that child. I'll tell you how to get there, and I'll go on ahead and keep watch. Well, said the constable grudgingly, all right, if you're in such a ding-danged hurry, but don't do nothing till I get there. Those folks are likely dangerous. I'll try to keep up, but this horse of mine, she's none too strong. Don't see as how I could get her to a gallop, even if I tried. That's right, said the man in the yellow suit. So I'll go on ahead and wait outside the house till you get there. He explained the route carefully, then dug his heels into the flanks of the fat old horse, cantering off into the darkness, where just a hint of dawn glowed on the edges of the hills far ahead. The constable chewed on the end of his cigar. Hoof, he said to his horse, did you get a gander at the suit of clothes? Oh, well, it takes all kinds, as they say. And he followed slowly after, yawning the gap between him and the man ahead, lengthening with every mile.